Hey everyone, I was hoping to get this message put together sooner, but things like this unfortunately take time to set up. I just want to say that the acts of war against Ukraine break my heart, and I know as a prior service member myself that my thoughts and prayers go out to everyone who's fighting the fight that they really shouldn't have to. That being said, we have been working behind the scenes with all of our podcasts and podcast partners to put a fund together in order to pay for any refugee housing and other needs that go alongside that, like food, water, and any clothing needs. Internally, many podcasts in the Hospitality FM network have voluntarily given up sponsorship money in order to donate to the cause and are working on a unified message in order to spread throughout all of our podcasts. So this is me calling out to all of our property manager friends, industry experts, and anyone knowing of those providing lodging for Ukrainian refugees seeking safety. You can contact me directly at will, with one L, W-I-L, at slicktalkmedia.com. We have an internal document that is being updated in real time, so if anyone can share this message within your network, we'd greatly appreciate it. I'm also placing in the show notes a link to our GoFundMe and landing page for Rentals to Rescue. That's rentals.torescue.com, where we're putting funds together in order to, again, provide finances for any of these lodging and relocation needs. So thank you so much for tuning into this quick message. I hope you guys are all well and safe, as I know we have tons of listeners in Ukraine and other countries in, in Europe. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Good morning, everyone. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend this recording for the episode due to being a little bit under the weather. I'm just now able to get my voice back a little bit to make this recording for you guys because Jerome from the hotel.school gave us a amazing giveaway for all of you listeners. So the first 50 people to redeem this code GMH2020 will get free hotel.school courses. Now the first 50 people get it so I would hurry up and go redeem that code. Now I hope you guys enjoy this episode. We really just got to dive in deep on education and the future of the education segment in hospitality and how this is going to look like now that we are all getting used to videos and micro learning and reskill and upskill techniques that companies like hotel.school provide. Now, I hope you guys enjoy the episode. Now, grab your coffee, sit back, and relax. Good morning. We Good morning. Got intros Good morning. Today. Great. Will has changed. Look at this. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, started the intro, well. but I, yeah, I don't know where he is. The one who well is he did not move to Switzerland and change his name. Uh, we <laughs> have a special right. guest on, but Will. It's a little under the weather this morning, so we we welcome uh, Michael and Jerome. Uh, we'll introduce Jerome here in a second, but Michael, how was the, the week last week? It was good. It was it was a good week. It's, of course, it's now ending and finishing everything. It just still push a little bit, a small change is still what we want to, pu- what we want to push. Um, talk about morals and the disruption report, what I did for the team. And just the end of the year, right? Just now really prepare yourself for the, well, we want to prepare ourselves for recovery, but if you see what's happening in, in, in travel now and, and, and what's happening in the world, it's 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 heavy, right? So just still, we were hoping that recovery could start uh, maybe the end of the year, or beginning of the year. If, if you see what things moving now, I just gave a quote to the Telegraph in the UK uh, about what I think is going to happen. But it's weird times. Um, still, what I really like appreciate is the motivation and the enthusiasm within the team. But I also share something during the uh, disruption report. And again, it's like I'm really looking forward to 2021. Going to be a crazy year again, especially at the beginning. But uh, I think a lot of things will change in, in, in travel. Uh, so I think the, going to bring us. the themes of some previous episodes carry on of flexibility. And yeah. now flexibility right now, being a travel-based company, uh, you're certainly not going to make it very far. So remain flexible and, 
and we'll get through it. it. It does seem a little more grim than it was a few weeks ago when we were celebrating the, the news of the vaccine, but yeah. uh, still hopeful that, that it all comes out on the, the more favorable well, side. Well, I'm checking now real time what does Airbnb does because we discussed, of course, Airbnb the last weeks, but it's it's still quite high. I think it's, it's so it's still like close to the opening amount yeah. what everybody's expecting will go down after one week. Uh, you as well, <laughs> remember. But it's, well, yeah. it went even quite up like last days. Now it went a little bit down again, but still it's still it yeah. is still impressive what you see. And even in pandemic when nobody travels, that a company like this is just well away at high. But we have discussed a lot about Airbnb. Let's let's make it the last time we discuss today Airbnb. <laughs> let's maybe address this one. Uh, I don't know if it, if it can possibly be the last time we discuss Airbnb on a travel-based show. No, today, today. Let's do it for today. Today, yes, that, that works. That works. Cool. Um, cool. Well, let's uh, let's jump into the quick segments, and then we'll introduce our guest. Cool. Hi. Good morning. Um, yeah, we're starting with the startup of the week. I choose a Swiss startup because also later we discuss about uh, uh, an online hotel school, which is also based in Switzerland. So, okay, just make it pretty Swiss today. Um, I choose for the Tri Boutique. Um, it's founded by Fernanda. I spoke Fernanda several times. And actually what they're doing is pretty cool. They, they're building actually a platform, um, an advisory platform for travelers where you can say, okay, I want to go to a specific place. And from there, they ask you quite a lot of questions based actually uh, a combination of AI and an, uh, human expertise. Uh, and actually, they generate for you an initiative. So in the end, you just know where to sleep, where to eat, where to go. So it's really nice what they're doing. Actually, they're going quite quick. They get some funding recently as well. Um, and yeah, I really like what they're doing, actually. So also within, within Bidroom, we're discussing now partnership with them uh, to see, okay, how can we integrate some functionalities of them. Um, I'm really impressed with what they're doing. I think they have a great founding team. Fernanda is, is, is great. She really understands the industry really, really well. And uh, for sure, recommend to follow the Trip Boutique. I think they will, especially now when things now, of course, are hectic and travel, but I think when recovery, people will need more planning, they need more expertise. So Trip Boutique is for me the start of the week. Uh, also want to discuss some events. Of course, it's at the end of the year, so you're going to be a little bit less active with, with events. Um, I did on Tuesday, I was presenting for 17 universities in the same time for the Berlin uh, um, Business School of Innovation. So it was pretty cool to do, actually. So I shared some, uh, some things, how I think recovery could look like. We discussed the pandemic from different areas. So don't do it specifically on, on travel, uh, but more about general opinion. And actually, what was really nice, I'm still wearing a Christmas jumper, getting into the Christmas atmosphere now. But last Friday, uh, I didn't want to share it last week, but now I did. Now I can. Last Friday, I was driving around completely dressed as Santa Claus. So if you want to see how I look like, check my LinkedIn profile. I was driving around, actually, the city center, visiting uh, many people from the, from the team, give them an, an, a cool bedroom backpack full of cool goodies and as a surprise. So I surprised many of them. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't visit all of them because it took me quite a long to even visit uh, some of them. Um, but it was really nice to, to surprise them. There were some of them that were shocked that I was standing in front of the door. Actually, one opened and uh, half naked, so that was a bit scary. But uh, besides, it was really nice to do. I surprised some people. And also in here, I want to compliment the whole team of Bidu and what they, actually, what they did actually last year. It was a crazy year, as I call it this. It was pretty hectic. But still, when you see them also in the monthly update and the meetings we had last week, you see their positivity, their, 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 their belief that they want to change something in the industry. So I'm really proud of them, what they did uh, uh, in 2020. And you see, actually, that they're really ready for 2021. And hopefully, well, it, we'll see. But hopefully, things will come back to normal. Um, none of us knows. I was hoping it will be the beginning, but it seems to be a bit later. But uh, uh, this is my update for, for now. Again, I want to thank the team for what they achieved last year. And uh, uh, go back to you, to your grandma. Grandma, I'm going to miss you at Christmas this year, but uh, we'll get together soon as that vaccine comes out. Uh, this week, I want to quickly cover something that it's going to lead more broadly into our topic of the week. But uh, I woke up to an email from 
uh, Simon Lehman and Natasha Morgan last week about a segment that they've done for hotel.school, which uh, they were kind enough to include noise aware in. And they're doing education, not just for hotels, but for vacation rentals and the tools, how to use them, uh, the must haves to safely and efficiently operate short term rentals. Uh, so, kudos to those two, as well as the broader hotel.school team. I think this initiative is super, super interesting. Uh, we've got a, a much longer segment to cover on it today, but honored that we would be included in, in something like that. And I wholeheartedly believe that, that noise monitoring is a not a nice to have, but a must have for short term rentals, especially. Um, and as hotels become more and more um, tech forward and, and staff light, I think we'll, we'll start seeing its applications be more important there as well. But without further ado, would love to bring uh, the rest of the group back and introduce Jerome. That was a cool intro. <laughs> uh, Jerome, you're on mute, but if I'm mispronouncing your name, maybe it's best you stay on mute. So, <laughs> well, thank you for oh, thanks, thanks, guys, and thank you for having me. It's really an honor to uh, to be part of uh, of your show, and uh, thanks for inviting me to talk a bit more about uh, about Hotel School. Glad you could join. Glad you could join. It's something that, that we mentioned uh, an episode or two back, but. Figured it warranted an entire segment. So, uh, I guess give us a, a quick overview of where the, uh, the fit in the market is, how the ideas um, came about for, for. I believe you're on the board. Um, yeah. So, tell us a little bit about the story. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we'll do. So, um, well, for the last uh, 11 and a half years, I've been in hospitality education in Switzerland with my uh, my last position being uh, the executive director on the uh, in the academics uh, field in, uh, in the, at the Swiss Hotel Management School. And as a school, we've been uh, always progressing with, uh, with with technology quite a bit and, and seeing how we can actually leverage technology to create more personalized learning experiences for students and actually enhance for them their you know, their learning experience. Um, uh, we became, for example, an Apple Distinguished School for the way that we are actually uh, uh, using technology in the in the learning process, and this has always had you know a lot of a lot of interest. And I see that you know that there's a lot of very interesting opportunities that are that are you know arisen by the application of technology in the educational field. Uh, so when uh, when the time was there and uh, and hotel, hotel the school uh, reached out to me and said like hey would you like to be engaged with our new project I was super interested because hotel the school is really leveraging uh, educational technology to provide quality hospitality uh, education for a very wide audience. So the idea is to really democratize uh, education you know, where the traditional schools how great that they are they are more catering for quite an an elite few uh, students that can actually access this type of education and they're not really in the process of uh, making this education available for a wide audience. And this is really what Hotel.School is, uh, is aiming to do uh, by, yeah, by using uh, very uh, creatively uh, the technology that is now maturing and becoming available uh, to provide this access to, you know, to, to, to professionals all over the world for their upskilling and, and reskilling purposes. Because it's a Swiss company, right? So this is a specific reason why you choose Switzerland. Uh, and, well, you know, because we all know that the Swiss hotel schools, I always have the example, startups are famous in Silicon Valley. Is, hotel, <laughs> is, is Lausanne the, the Silicon Valley of the hospitality yeah. education? I, th I think so. I mean, if you if you if you think about you know Swiss hospitality education has an, a special ring to it. I mean, I think that people working in the hotels they they always know it's like oh you've studied in Switzerland. They're like wow, you know that that's and there is quite a few hotel schools here that are obviously quite famous and quite uh, quite highly ranked. Uh, SHMS as well was in the top five worldwide. And uh, they all are here around the same region. Well, Switzerland's not that big anyway, but they're all around here. Of course, Lausanne is uh, is synonymous with uh, with EHL, uh, which is of course one of probably the most 
most famous hotel school in, uh, in, in the world. Uh, so yeah, so for us, it was only logical to actually base ourselves here in, in Switzerland and to build a little bit more also on the traditions of hospitality education in terms of, you know, the certain skills and uh, competencies that are important. Think about, you know, emotional intelligence and you know, problem solving and all those, you know, thinking on your feet, etc. You know, those things are, are, are part of our program, but at the same time, trying to disrupt this a little bit by really, you know, creating this this access to this education that is global um, and not for the elite few, but actually really for, you know, for a very wide audience. So for us, this is just a logical place to be right here in the heart of the birthplace of hospitality education, let's say. Well, what is the biggest difference? Because, of course, you can record a lesson from, from, from a teacher of, of EHL or SHMS or anything. So what is the biggest difference if you compare the, the, the courses or the, the curriculum on hotel.school compared with it in traditional school? Yeah, it's, I mean, all, all schools, I think, around the world, they, you know, because of the pandemic, they found themselves in a, in a very peculiar situation because they needed to go from, you know, from from, from face-to-face education to some form of, of different uh, the delivery. And what basically all schools have done uh, is uh, is to create an, an, um, yeah, an, an remote teaching experience. And that is not quite the same as creating um, you know, high quality content with uh, certain you know, interfaces like questions and exercises that are self-paced. So with Hotel.School, what, what, what uh, the product is, is actually not an, a replication of, you know, of a classroom where you're sitting in a classroom and listening to a teacher for, for an hour, but actually micro-learning modules where uh, you take an, 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 a bite-sized 10, 15 minute lesson where you have, um, uh, yes, there's a part of the video which is actually created to instill an emotional connection with the person that is uh, that is actually teaching you. That's so kind of a conversational style in the way that uh, the videos are recorded. But that is then blended with uh, different types of exercises, uh, questions that reinforce learning. Um, and that methodology is actually quite different than what you see otherwise. You know, so uh, 50 minutes every day, bite-sized type of, of learning uh, so that you can uh, stay current and, and attuned with what's actually happening outside in the industry, um, which we all know is is essential for people to you know to to upskill and to reskill and to remain current. Uh, that is what this this product offers. So it's a quite a different type of experience in that way. Because there's a written brain based sounds really cool, but <laughs> what is, what is brain based? So brain based is is based upon the uh, the methodology that we use. So we, we use an, an application called the Aegis uh, model, which is an an educational model that uh, incorporates uh, different types of um, yeah, neuroscientifically researched uh, learning enhancement. So what okay. this is really about sounds is really cool, actually. Yes. <laughs> So, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 basically in terms of how do you space the the learning? Uh, how do you make sure that you use, for example, emotions in the learning process? How do you make sure that you know that you keep the attention by you know focusing very much on the learner and the way that the videos and the scripts are created? So this is all based upon uh, you know, neuroscientific research that we've incorporated within uh, within the program, really to enhance the your ability or students' ability to uh, learn the most impactful and efficient way in a very short time frame um, I mean it is much more impactful to to learn uh, you know in short uh, you know bite-sized lessons where you have some reinforcement questions going on in, instead of listening to a teacher for for an hour and you know we all know that our attention span is is, is, is less than a goldfish now in the in, you know, <laughs> in the world. so you know in this way it's actually a much better way of, uh, of learning um, now at the same time we see of course see that the industry is is rapidly evolving um, technology is making you know a huge impression in the industry as you obviously you know are very well aware of it means that you know the people that are working in the industry they continuously need to keep themselves up to date with what is actually happening and how things are, are changing and for that for that we for, for that purpose there are not so many solutions out there I mean there's there's you know different training programs etc but um, hotel.school really fits a very specific vacuum that has been created uh, for this you know this upskilling and reskilling of industry professionals and and that's why you know we're anticipating quite some growth with uh, with, with with the business but is Sorry. the growth mostly mainly coming because of the pandemic? Many hotels in the industry sit, well, many hoteliers or people who work in the industry sitting at home. You see some, you see something from this because, of course, other people they aren't for love or lost their job and yeah, yeah, and that's uh, uh, it. yeah. At, at this at this moment of time, it is of course uh, people are unfortunately uh, out of out of out of jobs, which is which is terrible, of course. 
Um, but it is a good time to also kind of go back to school and to maybe take a course and to make sure that you keep current with what's uh, what's what's happening. Uh, take a new course to develop some some new skills. And this is what Hotel the School is is offering at this time. Um, we're actually giving away uh, free courses to you know to to people that have been hit by the pandemic. They may have lost their job. They can apply for for courses, and we provide them for free at this moment of time. Really, because we want to yeah democratize. We want to give back to uh, to to the industry. Uh, help the industry along uh, in in that way, um, and uh, and yeah, and you know, and and hopefully people that are now, let's say, need these courses in the future, they will think of hotel at school again in their you know upskilling, reskilling uh, needs in 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 the future to be. What um, so, a, a few questions here. First, the target is maybe people that don't have access to the high levels of Swiss hospitality schools uh, to have initial baseline learnings, and then to also continuously educate, like a, a really anybody in, in any elite fields would, uh, to make them better and stay up to date with technology and, and methodologies. Is that right? Yeah, it is. I, we're, we're not replacing uh, the traditional, let's say, you know, bachelor program. Uh, this this is not what what we're we're in it for. So, you know, you could still go to uh, to to a hotel school, and after you graduate, you know that actually your learning only really starts at that moment of time. You know that that once you came out of college, you know that's where you really start learning, right? So, you know, in that way, for for that uh, that type of learning, there are not that many solutions at this uh, at this time. Um, so it is in a way it is for people that maybe want to progress their career that maybe want to go to to a next step uh, think about somebody who's working in the front office wants to go into revenue management you know there's uh, there's courses for at the same time uh, we're seeing that vacation rental is an is a very important part it's an industry that also requires maybe some some further educational um, yeah, programs and you know it is something that that uh, that maybe has lacked a little bit on that front in terms of uh, of yeah education is not really available for for it, uh, so we saw that, and we saw that as a, as, an, as a great opportunity to uh, partner with uh, with AGL and actually create you know, vacation rental courses for the industry because we saw that also there there is this upskilling and reskilling need. Um, and as you will aware, noise noise aware was also <laughs> featured in the, in one of the uh, one of the courses. So I think that you know in in general we're heading towards a reskilling revolution. Yeah, you know, we we know that people need to continuously. You know, reinvent themselves and and learn on the go and have access to you know immediate learning solutions and that is not something that a traditional um, bachelor program or even a master program will offer to you you know so in those in those way uh, on this way these will coexist at the, uh, beside each other yeah that was, that was one of my questions I guess was the hospitality is is very unique it, it takes a lot of Inter human capabilities and, and something that medical school, for example, like a lot of it is behind the books and studying and learning, but it's tough to teach the bedside manners, right? <laughs> and, and hospitality, like you can tell when you go into a hotel uh, and, and that place has been groomed by someone who really understands hospitality versus someone who, you know, may have not gone on and gotten an education within hospitality. It, it is night and day. Um, and so I guess they, that answered one of my questions, which is how do you replicate the bedside manner, if you will, um, but you're not there to, the design of hotel school is not to teach that type of thing. It's to not, 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 not really the vocational uh, side of things, no. Um, but you know, but the thing is that that's the, the the you know things like emotional intelligence are actually things you can also learn. It sounds a bit dubious or strange, but you can actually learn this quite well by taking an online course. You know, it is it is all about understanding how. Uh, you reflect on your own behaviors, how you reflect on, uh, you know, on, on the things that you say, the way that you say them, and providing the right context for people so that they can actually put this into practice in, in real life. You can actually enhance those, those human skills through online education without, without a problem. 
Um, and even more, uh, technology is now actually becoming of, of age that uh, by uh, by measuring, uh, into, we were not doing this yet, but we're hoping to do this in the future, measuring intonation, you can actually measure if somebody is developing their emotional intelligence skill set. You know? So this technology is revolutionizing the way that people learn and, that, and the way that we can actually provide a very personalized learning experience to, um, uh, to, to students. Now, where one person is maybe already you know further ahead in their in their emotional intelligence skill set, we can actually tailor the program for their needs and differently for for others. You know, so is, this technology is is becoming very very interesting uh, to provide creative learning uh, opportunities for for students. Well, Michael said in this case when you're just studying medicine or anything is left from the books, and in this case, yes, of course, it's a lot of practical stuff. It's still online. Um, I just noticed, for example, when you're looking at the instructors or. On your website, you call it SMEs, experts. Yeah. So this is, uh, you're using people from the industry. I so saw, for example, distribution, somebody from, I think, IHG it was. So that, why, why you choose, in this case, people who are actually not get used to, for example, to, to teaching? Because, of course, it's yeah. different than you're teaching on a daily basis because you know how to bring information to, to someone and you're choosing to, to choose people from the industry. Yeah, you, you know, it is... Uh... I mean, this starts with the fact that it's not intended to, um, you know, to, 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 I mean, the, the, the product or hotel at school is intended in addition to your bachelor or your, your prior education, right? So, you know, once you're in the industry, we all know how important it is to actually have good mentors, people that are mentoring you, that are giving you, you know, the, the, the deeper insight about, you know, decision making on strategic level and, you know, making you think in a slightly different way. Um, and that is what, what Hotel the School does. You know, we take people that are specifically attuned to, um, you know, the, the way that things are happening in the industry now. Think about, you know, revenue management uh, is, is taught by uh, an, uh, an, a VP of revenue management from Hyatt and they have distribution delivered by a VP of uh, Intercon who's actually you know doing doing the course so you really get a very interesting first-hand information from people that are really with their boots on the ground that know what is happening that can really help you, you know, develop the skill set that you need to make it within that uh, that, that, that field you know and that is of course a little bit different than you have maybe in a, a professor who has not been in the industry who may not have that type of, of exposure uh, which you know is also very valuable because you know you also need to perhaps you know develop your your, your general transferable skills let's say you know through your bachelor program but then afterwards that's when you really need to seek out these mentors and that's what we can offer with uh, with hotel.school but like now for example i fully believe that that things change now right and then people are sitting at home or they want to upscale reskill but i think in 10 years uh, from now well i guess we're out of corona that time uh, <laughs> so let's sorry. hope so Let's hope nothing new appears uh, from somewhere. But let's say in 10 years, you think in 10 years this will be still the trend or you think education will be in general, so not specifically hospitality education, but education in general, you think it will be look different in 10 years? I, th I think, I mean, 10 years is uh, is maybe not that long. Huh? If you if you think about it a bit, bit longer, perhaps, then I mean, one, one thing that is clear is that digital innovation is going to transform education, no doubt. Right? There, there's no doubt about it that this is going to happen. Uh, this means that you will have uh, products like Hotel.School, but also other self-paced, uh, asynchronous type of learning uh, solutions that will pop up everywhere. And you will see that the uh, that the traditional schools they will need to also infuse uh, more of the te technological solutions to provide uh, this personalized learning uh, in in their curriculum. This is this is going to happen. You know, so I think that the times of of slow moving, um, you know, technophobic uh, uh, schools <laughs> that, that those times are are over. Right, that this, it is this is going to you know going to revolutionize uh, how education is provided. You know, and if you look at ed, uh, ed tech as a sector has has been in existence for you know for two decades, but it's only really now that the technology is coming to uh, of age that it's actually providing a learning experience that can you know that can surpass what you know a teacher could do in a classroom with with 20 or 25 students. Now, because of that fact that you can have a very clear visibility on your skill development, you can have a very personalized type of learning where you get questions or material offered to you that you particularly need, you know, individually. Um, that is the type of of, uh, of learning experience that can now be offered with uh, with the technology that's coming available, and that is going to provide an, an enhanced learning experience. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Now, and I so think and in, and in 25 uh, years, it's only VR and AI, or I, no, I don't. I don't think so. I, I do no. think that I do think that. Um, 
that the, the, the you know the, the 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 technology with with avatars etc you know that the head is uh, this uh, synthetic uh, video content that there will be you know some some very interesting usage of that in the in the hotel industry i don't know in the educational uh, industry i'm not sure if that will be in 10 years or or closer <laughs> to the 25 years but but there, there will be you know this personal avatar that can 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 teach you probably uh, but when is is the, is the question so i got it. Two questions for you that maybe get to know you a little bit better. Um, first of all, what is your favorite course within the, the hotel lab school? And what is your favorite hospitality moment throughout your career? Story that you've heard or... Oh, wow. Heard? Okay, well, <laughs> let me let me start with the story because the other question is quite a difficult one because we are we are working with industry, you know, uh, professionals. Pick a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that makes it. Uh, well, my, my favorite my favorite story out of the uh, that's something that I I uh, happened uh, that I experienced when I was working with Marriott in uh, in, in London. Um, it wasn't actually me, but it was uh, something that I've overheard happening in in the workplace. Was that. Um, we had, a, we had a waiter, and this uh, this gentleman was was very smart, and very tuned, and he he was a great guy working in a in a in a five star uh, hotel restaurant in, uh, in in central uh, central London, and um, uh, you know we had uh, they had four guests at the table, and they had a fantastic meal, and at the end of the meal he served them coffee, and so while he was walking away, one of the guests on the table uh, what became very upset, and he called he called the waiter, said what what come here, what is this? And the waiter said, well, what is it? What's, what's going on? And uh, he showed him his coffee cup. And in his coffee cup, there was a little um, rubber ring that fell out of the coffee machine. So he, he took the coffee machine thing out and the rubber you know, ring fell in and on the bottom. So he drank his coffee and this little rubber ring was on the bottom. And uh, as smart as this, this gentleman was, he, uh, the, the waiter, he said, uh, uh, oh, but, but sure, are you not aware? I was like, well, what do you mean? What are we not aware? Are you not aware that we do this every night with one guest and a lucky guest gets their uh, dessert and coffee for free? Uh, <laughs> and, and, and of course, the guest was, he kind of knew that he was probably not telling the truth, but he was just so disarmed by the way that he brought this, you know, that, that this is something that, that would always kept with me. You know, it's like these type of moments can make or break a guest uh, uh, experience, you know, where you make from, an, from an, let's say, a potentially very damaging and bad moment. You have the service uh, paradox, you know, you can actually create a very loyal guest out of it. Because those guests, they came back after every time, always asking for that waiter because they just enjoy you know the, the way that he uh, spoke and, and dealt with them on that uh, that situation. Maybe it was your dad, Michael, because your dad is only staying in marriage, right? Yeah, it could have been my dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and for for the for the favorite course, um, you know, I, I think that the that the, the for, so far from the vacation rental collection. I think that we have an uh, we have we have two very good courses there now, and there's another four that are coming available over the next uh, the next four weeks. I think that those ones will actually be um, some of my favorites for the fact that they will really help an an, an industry and and have an, uh, a very interesting know-how that can be shared with uh, with with an industry that yeah that that, that can uh, benefit from it. Let's say so. I think that my favorite at uh, this moment of time is is the the vacation rental collection. Interesting. All right. So what's sure. your goal for next year? So we imagine we have a, a call again in December 2021. So then you're much further, all the classes are completed. Where do you think uh, Hotel of School will stand at uh, that time? You know, so we are launching an, uh, a Swiss Master Hotelier program, which is in a collection of 24 uh, self-paced uh, virtual courses that you, again, you take, you know, 10, 15 minutes every day. Uh, and that actually is based upon an, a master program, but then taken away all the things that are not relevant. So it is really, again, industry professionals that are uh, delivering these courses together with people from our side that are that are uh, co-creating them. And this can uh, be seen as an as an as a very effective um, uh, postgraduate or, or master level type of, of education. Um, and I think that that is uh, going to be quite an interesting value proposition for people in the industry that want to have more instead of one specific thing, more of an all-round understanding of different areas within the hotels. 
So you know, it, it covers from from the finance side to the human resource side to you know to to F and B, all kinds of different uh, sectors, and that will be a great program for people that want to progress into more senior positions in the in the hotel industry. Um, we're launching that now in uh, in January, and it will become available, or the the, the the let's say the the courses will come available over the next year. So by let's say this time next year, the, the whole program will be uh, will be finished, and then I can tell you how how successful it was. But I'm I'm very looking forward to launching that program. Cool. Is there a big final exam? There's no final exam. No. <laughs> All right. Because you want to have the answers, right? <laughs> Music to the ears. It's maybe, if you play your cards right, no, we have, uh, no, the, the, the way that, that you know, the, 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 the programs are designed is really to, you know, for individual learning. So we're not wanting to be the ones that are, you know, standing there uh, with, uh, the, like, like, you know, the traditional schools, that, that's not what this is for. So all the way that the, the quizzes and the tests are created is for formative learning. So you provide, if you provide the wrong answer, you actually get an explanation of why this was wrong. And, you know, then you can learn from it and then continue you that's the way that the, the program is, is designed so no no heavy exam no no gmat type of all things that's not going to happen no no very cool well hey, uh, for the listeners i'm just thinking for sure we have we, well we call it good morning hospitality so I, I guess a lot of people who listen to us they're in hospitality can you do something for them some discount or anything i always try right i'm dutch i always try to get discount everywhere so maybe also for the <laughs> listeners but of course, but of course, I mean, for, for people that are now in the industry and are listening to this uh, this postca- podcast, um, you you are passionate about about the hotel industry and and you know vacation rental as well. Um, we can give away uh, 50, uh, 50 free courses uh, uh, for for um, uh, Good Morning Hospitality. And of course, if you are in a situation that you've lost your job or you know in a situation that you can actually not um, or you, hey you, you want to learn more, you want to use this time in the right way of course we're very willing to to help as well so just reach out and uh, we will sort you out for sure cool, cool. well so I, what, uh, what are you gonna do michael you're gonna do one i yeah I've, I've started one but i i think um to me i'm super interested in the way that hotels do things um i'm not necessarily in the weeds on how things exactly work in vacation rentals but i've got a nice broad view of it i i'd love to to learn more on the hotel side and i think i think there's learnings that can go both ways uh there's a lot of things that hotels can learn from short term rentals on technology for example and then vice versa on hospitality and service and revenue management and things like that so i i wonder how you guys potentially look at, at cross education uh from the two segments yeah, that's a, that's a good one, and you know, and I think that that's also the, the the state or the place that we are with the industry now is that 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 line between vacation rental and and the hotel uh, is 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 blurring. It's it's not it's not really there anymore. Of course, there there are, you know different type of businesses that need to be run, uh, but you know all the big players are now also into vacation rental, Marriott, and you know Accor, of course, just announced as well uh, that they are they're into it. So, you know, in in that way, I think that this is becoming a more acceptable and accepted and, and big part of the of the hospitality industry and where certain things are quite different you know if you think about uh, revenue management in a hotel it's very different than uh, than within vacation rental just because of the way that you know the, the, the business is uh, but still there's great opportunities for cross exposure and, and and to learn from from each other in that way um, you know the, the personalization of, uh, of of vacation rental versus maybe the yeah the the, the business side of, of how hotels have been run and, and the standards that have been set you know so there's probably some very interesting uh, overlap there um, and for us at hotel.school, we, we don't see them as separate. You know, we, we see that as as hospitality, and you know, in, in that way, they, they're for us. They're 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 part of the same you know overarching group uh, hospitality. So we have courses for both. I hope you're not making too many hotel people upset by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think I mean you know I like like we said you know all the big players are are going into vacation rental now as well you know so in in that way if you can take the the, the hotel experience and put it into a, a very personalized uh, uh, vacation rental home I mean isn't that isn't that a, a, a fantastic opportunity I mean it's uh, I, w- I would want them absolutely absolutely <laughs> and being able to use points I mean that's a, a huge thing as well uh, loyal travelers tapping into different types of properties. So awesome. Well, I think we're, we're running out of time here uh, for the, the segment, but fantastic uh, work on, on 
helping get this up and off the ground to, and bringing it to market. Uh, kudos to the team and thank you for, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for for having me. It's uh, it's been it's been it's been really cool to you know to dive deep into hotel the school and what we're trying to do. So uh, uh, again, if there's uh, people, if your listeners that would like to uh, take a course, please let them reach out. And uh, like I said, you know, the first fifty you will get a free course from us. I will be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.